and I am ready to draw my next shape. So it's best to make that layer first. And first we're gonna draw a red circle. So I'm gonna call this layer red circle. And I'm gonna look for my shape tool. So if there's a rectangle by default and we're gonna make circles which are ellipses that have a constant radius. So we're gonna have the computer decide when and how that is a perfect circle just by holding down shift. Then no matter where I drag, a perfect circle is created. Now I don't want that there. I want it to be centered. So in order to do that, I have to be able to draw a circle from here, but it's selecting the anchor point. So just like before, if I try and draw a circle, I'm actually moving the anchor point. The trick is to not have anything selected. Now this is your selection arrow, and you can see it has the V shortcut. I just click away. That's one way, like now nothing is selected. There's a keyboard shortcut for it. You can go select and deselect. I've changed mine to control D because that's what Photoshop uses. Um, but you can just select it from the menu as well, just a little slower. All right, let's go make our circle. So I'm going to start right in that very center of the page. And I'm going to click. Holding down shift makes that perfect circle, but I also want it to be centered. I just add alt. So shift and alt are both being held down, and I can make a circle that goes almost to the edge. Now let go of the mouse first, and then the keyboard, and it will be a perfect circle. Let me increase the thickness here. So let's just go up to that 15. And I did call this a red circle, but look, I wasn't on the red circle layer. So let's take a look at what makes up this layer. And you can see there's the ellipse. I mistakenly drew it on the wrong layer. If you catch it early enough, it's a simple fix. If you draw a whole bunch of things and then you realize, oh my gosh, things should have been separated, this can be a big job. But right now, I can click and drag and drop that ellipse onto the red circle layer. And I can test that out by hiding each of those layers in turn. I'm going to select that red circle and I am going to change its color. So here's the stroke color. And you can see that red line there. That means there is no fill. It is empty. So I'm going to change the color of this black stroke. You could double click on it and then choose from millions and millions of colors. Or you could use this section right up here in the control bar. You can just click on the drop down arrow and you have a number of colors that are all there ready for you to use. So let's just make that a red circle. Let's continue by making the other circles. Let's do red, green, blue. We're doing an RGB color space. So I'm going to make this red and then this is going to be a green circle. Very good and I will draw on it. Can't draw on it yet, but I could select that layer. There's nothing on it. And now I can just draw my circle from the center, shift and alt. And I want to divide this distance up fairly evenly, picking a green color. Brighter colors are going to work better for this particular thing. So let's do blue. and select the layer since there's nothing on it very easily drawing a circle from the middle and changing that one to a nice bright blue and one more so let's do let's do yellow for our last one selecting the layer i guess if it just has the color that gets the point across but i do like you to follow the instructions and I should do the same. This one is now going to be a yellow circle and I can just double click on here and add the word circle. Your later designs are gonna have all sorts of different shapes and this way you can check yellow, blue, green, and red. Oops, red. And I've got the X here that I can hide as well. So what I'm going to be asking for is a snip of this and an export of this once we get the gradient fills in there next. I haven't saved this in a while. That's bad news. 
always save your work. Anytime you accomplish something, get a circle drawn, make sure you're saving.